Hi, this is Mark Mancini from VRB Outstanding. This week's topic is docks, but instead of coming to you from a short-term rental, we're going to start this video from North Middle Beach, South Carolina, and our primary residence. This week we're coming to you from North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, but we're not coming to you from a short-term rental. We're coming to you from our backyard here in the uh, ICW, the Intracoastal Waterway. So we're going to talk about docks this week and a few things that I'd like to discuss. For those of you who aren't familiar with do docks, especially the uh, plastic bondular type. So while I'm over here actually, I want to talk about water. Whenever you have a, a dock, because you'll have boats, you'll have jet skis, etc. You're going to want to have some kind of hose and preferably a splitter where you have a couple hoses. The reason being for that, if you go out in salt water with a boat or a jet ski, you need to rinse out the motor of all the salt water by using fresh water. Okay, so that's why we have a couple of these spigots here to do just that. Then what we also do is we hose down the ski and the boat, remove all the salt. You'll see people use salt away products as well. So it's very important to have fresh water supply over at your dock. The guests are going to appreciate that and get you that five-star review you want every single week. The other thing I encourage, got these at uh, Amazon, I believe. They're about 20 bucks a piece. They're my favorite type of lights. They're dust to dawn, okay? If you don't have these at your rental, you're missing out considerably. People do not know where the on-off switches are. You shouldn't burden them with that. Have these safety lights come on. They'll come on automatically. This is an LED light. It'll come on at dusk, they'll stay on all night till dawn. This way, if people are either leaving early on their boating expedition or coming back after maybe a, a sunset cruise, they'll have the lights on to see where they are and be able to come back safely and tie everything up and secure everything up safely. Now, the dock system I have here, it's called an easy dock. Easy dock, I'm not gonna lie, it's the most expensive one out there. It's really good though, and I'll explain that to you more in just a minute. The um, gangway is another thing that people need to concern themselves with. I always recommend getting the aluminum gangways. They're going to last a lot more than the wooden ones you'll see uh, people build for their docks. So uh, the gangway is going to get you from the, your pier down to your dock. Now with docks, you can get wooden docks like you'll see around and we'll walk around I'll show you some wooden docks behind me. The wooden docks are a lot cheaper but they're gonna require that you pressure wash them on a regular basis, and you're also gonna to wanna to refinish them on a regular basis as well. And that may be yearly, maybe every couple years, depending where you're at. Um, after a period of time, they will wear away, and you'll have to replace them, so that's why they're cheaper. The Easy Dock is a lot more money, but it's plastic, it's permanent. Uh, the other good thing about it is that you can rearrange it. And on this dock, we've rearranged it a few times, and that's a great thing. It's almost like Legos. They piece together uh, and it works out well. But there's some other manufacturers and other brands that do similar things. Uh, some of them you'll see in squares. They're about uh, 18 inch by 18 inch squares. And they hook up and they're very configurable. And they're also uh, very good uh, solutions for you to, to use. So I'm gonna step around over here. Also wanna point out a boat lift. Now some of you may have boat lifts at your rentals. We're going to talk about boat lifts and specifically fishermen and anglers at your vacation rental in a whole nother episode because there's a lot to talk about when fishermen come to rent your home. But uh, this is also what we have when I had my boat and uh, we're going to talk about this in a future episode so don't you worry, hang in there. Now I'm going to walk along here. Again, this is the Intracoastal Waterway and about uh, four miles north of here is the outlets out to the jetties, Little River and Bird Island, where people go out there and go out to the ocean from their boats. And you'll see in the background, a lot of people have these docks and there are black floating devices underneath and they're wood. And those are the wooden ones that will wear over time and require maintenance. This actually right here, you'll see some discoloring from the uh, brown brackish water of the ICW. So we'll pressure wash and bleach this every, every year just to kind of keep it fresh. 
and uh, you'll see how these docks just kind of uh, connect with these plastic connectors. They're pretty easy to go together, but you're going to want to probably go ahead and get a professional and, and install these for you. Now, these right here are jet docks, and these specifically are the Easy Port Max. These will put two jet skis, as you can see, I've got a, a kayak there, but these will put two jet skis nose to, to end or bow to stern all the way out through here and people ride up their ski and because they have these wheels it's easy to push the ski on and off again these are expensive when they're new the key thing with all jet docks biggest secret keep looking okay look for used ones on craigslist facebook on a regular basis i can't stress that enough that uh, you're probably going to want to, while you're thinking about amenities for your short-term rental, is to go ahead and and uh, and look, even though you're not in the market at that time, just keep the feeler out. All year round, just look. And I would look not only where your short-term rental is, but also look where you live as well. You might have people by the lake or inland that have them as well. Expand your scope. Now these things are about 10, 12 feet long. Okay, that's where having a trailer is gonna be ultra important. You can always rent a trailer or a truck over at U-Haul, but one of the things that we'll talk about in our course actually is the importance of actually buying your own trailer. It's a very good tax deduction. It's gonna be uh, multi-purpose and so forth. You're gonna use it often. When I say look for them used, you're gonna look for them used and you're gonna find people who just wanna get rid of them. And you'll find these things pretty cheap. Don't let people high boy and say, oh, it's worth, you know, $4,000. It's not. You can get these things. I've gotten jet docks for $500 a piece. Just be patient. They're out there. They're a dime a dozen, especially if you're near um, rent jet ski rental places by resort areas. Another feature with the Easy Dock, at least, and Easy Dock doesn't endorse me. I pay full price for their products, which is a lot, is they have a dock box that has a... Um, an angle on the back here and it looks like it's about to fall off but really it isn't it's on here very stable and the dock box allows me to keep all kinds of items in here secure and safe and I can even lock it up but I keep a lot of my um, my covers for my jet skis and um, oil and tools in there as well and they ask me more what makes you an expert on these things and that's a that's a good question because I've been riding jet skis for well over 30 years about 32 years now I bought my first uh, Kawasaki jet ski. I raced. I was a sponsored racer by an international company and some local dealers. I did that for several years, and now I just ride just because I enjoy riding. And I've got several, probably several too many. I've got a fleet of them. But uh, I love having jet skis at short-term rentals because they're actually very inexpensive. It's a one-time purchase, and the great thing about it is uh, it'll attract a lot of guests and a lot of better guests. You're gonna get people who are watercraft enthusiasts, and the people who have that kind of disposable money will also have the ability to rent a, a, a house and pay more and want to pay more if, if they've got a place to store their skis securely and safely. And because you've got lighting at night, you've got water and maybe even electricity like I have here, uh, it's a great way to attract those people who are gonna use your short-term rental for um, for things uh, besides just staying in your house. Now, again, with the docks, a couple things I want to talk about with boats, okay? Because it's not just jet skis, it's boats. You'll see over here that we've got cleats. These are called cleats, okay? And people can tie or uh, moor their boats up here against the, uh, the dock. Because we're in a wake zone, you're not going to see many people wanting to do that. Hopefully, you're in a no-wake zone, you're in a channel where people are going slow, and not rocking the boat. But I have put my boat here uh, overnight if need be. I probably wouldn't put it out here for a week though. Now when I first had this uh, jet dock and this, this easy dock right here, we had this position very differently. But because we were able to rearrange these, it made it a really good solution for us. Now, we're gonna be filming later on over at uh, my rental in Merle's Inlet, South Carolina. And that's got a wood dock over there, but it's also got jet docks. And we're going to show you um, how that area is set up. This right here is a 42-foot vessel. You need to know what size boat you're allowed to have at your dock. 
and you're able to hold at your dock. Something that large is going to be difficult to have in some places, and many, <laughs> many are going to have a limit of about 30 feet or so. That 42 foot boat that just came by wouldn't be able to fit here. <clears throat> We'd probably only be able to fit, fit about a 32, 34 foot boat here. I had a 30 foot center console that fit here pretty well. Probably get a little bit bigger off of here. But you need to know what size vessel you'd be able to have either at your dockage or on your boat lift. So now that we talked about Wrecky, my fleet of jet skis on my easy dock. We're going to go to Merle's Inlet, South Carolina, about an hour south of here to my short-term rental over there. And we're going to show you some, some used jet docks that I got for about $1,200 a pair that I have my guests use. And guess what? It gets used a dozen or so times a year. Guests love bringing their skis down. It's a 10-minute ride to the ocean. And it allows them to, to go out and not only enjoy the inlet, but enjoy the ocean riding as well, where there's plenty of dolphins and other marine life. So again, if you have a place on the water, whether it be a, uh, on a channel area or the intracoastal waterway, having a jet dock and having dockage is always going to attract more guests. It's going to attract the boater, the jet ski enthusiast. They've got more disposable income. They're a better quality guest. And it's going to get your, your place booked over to your neighbors who didn't look on Craigslist or Facebook for that $1,200 deal on a pair of jet docks for your rental. So hang on and we'll see you in just a few minutes. Welcome back. Here we are at Bazinga in Garden City Beach, otherwise known as Myrtle's Inlet, but an hour south of North Myrtle Beach. My first rental I got over a decade ago. This was one of my earlier amenities I added. I got a pair of jet docks. I want to say I paid about a thousand, maybe twelve hundred dollars for the pair. And just dropped them in the water and I attached them to my dock. And it's a great amenity for guests because they get to bring their jet skis and go out in the ocean and ride around. And they're used probably 12, 18 times a year easily from guests. Now I know we talked about having easy dock docks, the plastic docks, but I want to show you the wooden docks. Now this is a wooden dock here and this needs to be uh, pressure washed and painted on a regular basis. It's a lot more upkeep than the plastic ones. Also, eventually the wood has to get replaced. They've already replaced the wood on here once or twice over the past 10 years because, this, because the salt air does a lot of damage on the wood and really beats it up. One thing you'll see behind me, and I did this specifically for the video, is the very unsightly low tide. Now, as you can see, taking a boat or a jet ski through here is impossible. And that's why you need to tell your guests to download a tide app so they know when it's high tide and when it's low tide. So over here, we have, it's still going out. You'll see a trickle of water over there and that water is actually going out. That's actually low tide and uh, it's, it's still going out. All the water will be out of this channel and what's gonna happen is it's gonna fill up when it comes high tide and about three quarters of the way up that seawall, you're gonna see the, the wood going parallel across the top. That's where the water comes up to, so it's a good that's probably about a six, six, seven foot delta between the low tide and high tide. But around here, it gets to be eight and with king tides, even more. So you have to make sure your guests know about that. The other great thing about having jet docks is if you have your own jet ski and you use your short term rental, which you should do a couple times a year at least, is that you now have a place to keep your skis safely when you're not using them. So always remember when you add an amenity to your property, you get the benefit of it as well. Now, aside from you being the recipient of that, your guests are gonna appreciate that. Now, I can tell you for certain that I have guests who've rented my property because I had jet docks. They're avid jet skiers. They like encompassing the area, whether it's in the ocean or the, the inlet or the ICW. And they love the fact that they were able to launch your skis at the boat ramp, ride them over here and leave them here all week long. And then when they're done, they bring them back on the boat ramp. So always make sure you tell your guests where the boat ramps are, where the fueling stations are, etc. If there's any laws in their area, they need to be concerned of. But the jet docks are great, not only because I keep my jet skis on them and the guests keep theirs on there, but we also have kayaks over here that you can see behind me. And these kayaks, sometimes people, if they don't have a jet ski, 
We'll bring them down here and we'll just keep them on the jet ski dock. This way they don't have to keep bringing them up and down the gangway to use them. So it's multi-purpose. Plus you can also fish and crab off them as well. So there's an example of a wooden dock. What you'll see is four black squares underneath. That's the flotation device that holds it in. Those are fastened in, but during storms and hurricanes, oftentimes you'll see them disconnect and floating down the waterway. Therefore, you have to replace them. Now, again, the wood has to be maintained, pressure wash, paint, etc. And the, the wood has to get replaced every so often as well. The ongoing cost from those docks can be substantial. So if you buy a house and it has it, that's fine. Run it through the cycle, but as it starts needing repair, get some prices. Think about the long term. If you're going to have this house in the short term rental for a long time, and hopefully you will, that's part of the long game, is you're going to want to get something that's either um, Trex, Polywood, or the, the plastic uh, type like we showed you, the Easy Dock, or the plastic metal type, the combination. That's going to last a lot longer. I'd buy it once and have it forever. This is an example of a metal framed plastic top that is the combination metal plastic dock I've spoke about. It's made of recyclable polyethylene plastic on top. This thing will last years. You're gonna have this thing almost forever. There's zero maintenance, they're well built. Definitely worth looking into versus going with a wooden dock. So as you can see, we've got the tide now coming in. This is an inbound tide. You'll see the water starting to come on in. If you follow me this way, you'll see that we now have got a foot of depth in the middle of the channel and uh, we'll start getting that up it'll probably be as high as that 4x4 going parallel on that seawall. Um, the tide apps are great to help you out with that because you can't navigate a vessel in here until it's probably two to four feet, absolute minimum. So always make sure that your guests are aware of where they can launch their ski, any local rules that they need to be aware of, where they can get fuel, and if there's anything else that, uh, about your house and about where your jet ski is that they should be aware of. If you follow me around here, so over here we've got our freshwater spout. And once we start up for the season in about two or three weeks, we're going to attach a hose to this. Now that's going to allow our guests to not only wash the salt deposits outside of their boat and, and watercraft, but for those of you who don't know, all boats and jet skis are cooled by the water that they're in. So when they're on salt water, that salt water is going through the motor and cooling it off. And when they're done, it's going to leave salt deposits inside the motor. They have to flush those out after each run. So it's important you leave that hose for them. They attach it to their motor. They flush all those salt deposits out. Make sure their boat's nice and safe. It's great maintenance for them. If you want to get bookings every single year, a watercraft owner like myself, is gonna appreciate the fact that they can bring their jet ski and have the jet dock here. And the fact that my host knew that I'd have fresh water supply here to flush out my ski and, and wash my ski off each time, have a hose for me. To me, that lets me know the host is appreciative and attentive to the needs. That's what makes the host VRB outstanding. It's all the little things. It's a repeatable process that garnishes you five-star reviews each and every week. Thank you for joining us this week on VRB Outstanding segment on docks and jet docks. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button below, and we'll see you next week.